Hey everyone, welcome to the Get Your Life Together Girl podcast. I'm your host, Danielle Van. As a cognitive behavioral therapist, life coach to women and author, I've spent my life studying and learning from the stories that make us human. It's my passion and goal to help you shift your perspective and your mindset to create a lifelong revolution to help you reach your greatest potential. This week, we're taking a one-on-one deep dive into your personal story, into your life revolution through a process and a path that many of us are seeking right now. What's that process, you ask? The process of emotional healing. So sit back, grab a pen, and let's take a mending journey together. The Get Your Life Together Girl podcast starts right now. All right, so it's time to lay down some facts. You know, there does come a time in each of our lives where we begin to seek true motivation to heal. Seriously, let that sink in for a second. There really is a time where, whether it's conscious or subconscious, where each of us reaches this point that we realize it's time to let go of the baggage, that it's time that we release all of this upset that owns us and that we stop giving so much space to the hard experiences of our lives, the stories that have worked to define us in ways that perhaps we've simply grown tired of. And when that time comes, so many of us stand back and scratch our heads while we ask a singular question, how do I even begin to heal? (laughs) It's a big question, isn't it? Our hardest experiences tend to find their way into the rhythm of our lives. And these fragmented pieces of us create imbalance, suffering, and upset until we give them the attention, love, and care that we and the experience deserves. In order to be complete, to feel whole, we must move through our hardships and find healing so that the past no longer has a stronghold on our thoughts, feelings, and actions. I said something highly important there. It's the fact that we must move through healing. Healing is called a process because there are a series of steps and actions that must be taken in order to reach a particular end. An end of release, of understanding the lesson, extracting what is meant for us, and then using it for our benefit. So let's deep dive into what emotional healing is, the often overlooked emotional warning signs, and the five stages of emotional healing. And then let's scratch the surface of the biggest question of all, how? First things first, if you take nothing else away from this time together, let it be this big moment of truth. (laughs) Are you ready for it? Okay. Sometimes healing, letting go, is far greater an act than what it takes to hold on. Think about that for just a moment. Sometimes healing, letting go, is a far greater act than what it takes to hold on to that moment. There it is, that big aha. You see, we build these experiences in our mind, in our emotional body, so that they become so great that letting go seems damn near impossible. We begin to favor our trauma, our pain, our upset, the misfortune, the utter BS we've run into alongside and walked through because it gives us an excuse. It allows us to blame all the things that aren't working in our life on this one moment. We use our discomfort to be comfortable. We trick ourselves into believing that this situation, this burden that we carry, is the factor of why our life is just simply not what we want it to be. And we use that to fall into victim mode because it's easier than doing the hard work. Does that give you a pass to not do the work? No. How many different ways can I say no? Nope, not going to happen. Zero, zilp, I don't know, but it's absolutely not a pass. 
And yet you already know that to be the truth if you've already worked to heal the emotional baggage or if you've avoided it because you know and have anticipated the cost, <laughs> right? When hard things happen, we put in place coping skills and barriers and mental processes that we think, that's the big word, think, will keep us from experiencing other situations like those we are simply trying to run from. But listen, just because you board up the windows doesn't mean that when another storm hits that it's not going to find another way in. The only way to live a life that is together and free of emotional pain is through doing the work to heal what has not worked for you. So what is emotional healing then? Let's get really simple with this and build a mental picture in your mind. This is one that I often use in private session because most of us are visual learners. So let's say you break your ankle. The pain is so great that you know you must seek help. It's beyond what you can handle in this moment on your own. You know that you have to take action to care for the bones and ligaments. You have to baby them, wrap them in a cast, and refuse to put all of your weight on that brokenness. You accept that things are going to be different for a short time. It's almost an automatic process. And then you accept the only way to get through this healing is to allow time itself to unfold. With that time, the bone grows back, the ligament heals, and then the ankle is free from the support it's been given. But the healing is not really done at that point, is it? Because when you take the support off, it's only then that the strengthening work can begin. You know, you go to physical therapy to rebuild what was lost while you were in those first stages of healing. Your emotional body deserves the same level of processing and care as your physical body. When something in your emotional body breaks, you must care for it in the same way that you would your ankle. We have to acknowledge the pain. We have to do what we must to care for it. We have to wrap ourselves in the support we need. We have to accept what's happening. We have to understand that what is occurring is nothing more than just a moment, not a life sentence. We have to get into a space that that too is automatic, just like the acceptance of a broken ankle taking time to heal. The only way to move through a storm is through time itself. As we allow ourselves to be supported in this manner, it's only then that we begin to do the strengthening work. Can't you see there's no difference in the way that we handle our physical body as to how we should handle our emotional situations, to our emotional pain, to the things that try to own us. In fact, physical injuries are often easier to deal with because we handle them in real time. We don't allow them to fester. We simply take on what needs to happen. And yet our emotional pain tends to linger for years. We refuse to do the work. So let's remove the visual and go through the what of healing, those stages that I mentioned, the steps. Emotional healing is a process in which you accept, there's the big word, accept, the circumstances in your life that have impacted you in a way that you've experienced a negative emotional reaction. It's an inward journey that requires you to resolve the habits the coping skills, and the emotional blocks that you've put in place while you've simply tried to survive. It's a process of accepting our feelings without judgment. Hear those words again, without judgment. It's taking ownership over the fact that our experiences are not against us, but they're actually for us. It's also coming to the understanding that we will always be the person that we were meant to be as each experience arises. So often hard things happen and we catch ourselves in this negative thought cycle of saying, if I would have shown up differently, if I hadn't done this, this wouldn't have happened. And we need to let that go. We need to understand we were and are the people we are supposed to be 
as our experiences and moments arise. This journey also asks us to dig in and find the root cause, look at our triggers, and release the connections that we've owned. The connections that come back as negative thoughts. They sound like, I can't do anything right. We know that's not the truth because no human has the capacity to fail 100% of the time. You know that you can't fail 100% of the time. You've never failed 100% of the time, and yet we own these things full stop. The limiting beliefs sound like, I always screw up. The relationships that fail because we spend far too much time making others pay for what was never theirs to own to begin with. We have to look at this. We have to release those connections. Or as I often like to ask, but was this person at the scene of the original crime? (laughs) Probably not. And yet we still continue to make these connections and show up this way. This inner journey tells us that we have to let that go. As we step into this process and lean into each element, we find ourselves honoring our feelings creating patience in our lives, not only for ourselves, but for others. We learn to stop interfering with the goodness that flows within our daily experiences by always being focused on what was or wasn't. We even make better decisions because we begin to do so from a balanced and rational mindset instead of one that is focused in and through pain. Emotional healing trashes the blinders that we've put in place and gives us a clear lens to guide our perspectives. Perhaps you're nodding your head, or perhaps you're still questioning whether you need to move through healing or not. If you fall into the ladder and you're asking yourself, where do I need to start? How do I need to do this? Or do I even need to do it in the first place? It's time to ask yourself if you're experiencing any of the aftershocks of your hardest moments. Those questions sound like, do I find myself trying to control everything in my life? Do I feel anxious over everything and yet nothing at all? Am I experiencing unexplained anger and mood swings? Why is it so difficult for me to concentrate? Do I find myself leaning into and owning guilt, shame, and even disbelief without understanding why? Why do I feel so sad and hopeless? Have I withdrawn from my life without even realizing it? Why am I having trouble sleeping? Why have I let myself become insecure, upset, and riding the highs and lows of my emotions? These questions can go on for days, but I won't do that to you. You get it. When you don't do the work in real time, the emotions we connect to our experiences can own us full stop. They own our thought processes. They own how we feel. They own how we show up. They own every single piece of us. So how do we let go? How do we release and make our experiences work for us. We move through the five stages of healing. The first step is to accept. I've said that word several times, haven't I? And the reason why is this is the only way that true healing begins, right? To accept. When bad things happen, we often turn to denial. We want to act as if things didn't occur. They didn't happen. We don't want people to judge us. We don't want to feel pity. We don't want to take blame. We dishonor our emotions and we push everything to the side. That only works for just a moment. What we push to the side will always find a way back in. The only way to start this process is to move through healing by accepting that we do not have to suffer for what has occurred in our lives. What shows up are our teachers. They are present to show us what we do want and what we don't. We can never know what we really want to show up in our lives if we don't have contrast. Look, it can be uncomfortable. It can be painful. It can be downright exhausting. But these things are there to guide you back on your path. They're there to help you reveal pieces of yourself that you wouldn't know otherwise. 
Yeah, it sucks when hard things happen. But what if that hard thing had to occur to show you who you are meant to be? If you've listened to other episodes, you've heard women like Angela Morris and Rhonda Miller and Priel Levine talk about these moments that were so life shattering. But in the end, they revealed their purpose. That begins in this stage of healing, of acceptance. Step two is awareness. To be emotionally intelligent means that you have the ability to name your emotions, define their meaning, lean into their purpose, process them, and then use them for your benefit. Where does that process start? It starts with awareness. We can't process that which we're not aware of, right? We can't teach what we don't know. Increasing the awareness around your emotional reaction to any given moment, to any given experience, gives you the ability to name what you are feeling. It allows you to know why your emotions are present. It gives you the opportunity to approach the experience in a way that will work for you and not against you. Awareness is key in any factor, in any situation, no matter what it is, but it's especially key when we're talking about emotional healing. That moves us into step three, which is confrontation. Our emotions have a way of lying dormant until something triggers them, right? So we have these big experiences, we move on from them, and then all of a sudden, they blow up again. They don't simply just go away because we haven't done the work or we pushed it to the side like I mentioned. The impulse, the initial reaction dies down and it sort of just sits back and waits for its time to shine again. That sounds funny, but it's the truth. My guess is you've experienced this already because we've all had moments when someone does something and we respond in such a harsh or unnecessary way that everyone is left reeling, including you. We use words like you always, you never, why can't you just dot, dot, dot. We explode and instead of leaning in and asking ourselves why, we blame other people. We wait for the situation to stop or to be over and we often then push the emotions down, put our foot over it so that we don't have to deal with the discomfort but no matter what, those emotions come sneaking back into play. The only way to take on anything is to deal with it directly. If you skate around a subject, you receive a skate around response, right? When we confront our feelings, we have the ability to release the emotional pain, the blockage, and even give ourselves space to move forward. Confronting looks like having hard conversations with ourselves. It's journaling. It's doing the brain dump. It's stepping away from the moment by removing the emotion and getting down to just the facts, right? This happened and then this happened. It's analyzing the what, when, who, and how. Those elementary questions that really are imperative to use all throughout our lives. It's asking ourselves, is this the way I really want to feel? When you not only know that the answer is no mentally, but you can feel that the answer is no, that's when it's time to move to step four. And step four is expression. To heal, you must express your emotions. It's verbalizing the words that you need to say. Sometimes it's crying. Look, for anyone who says that crying is weak, I'm going to need you to seriously take a step back and stop it. <laughs> crying is an expression of energy. It's a release. It's a physical letting go. So if you need to cry, cry. There's no shame in it. If you need to yell, go outside and yell. Go on a run. Work out. Do whatever serves you as long as it is healthy. Do whatever it takes to make yourself feel better, to express your emotions. Do not allow your emotions to linger in your physical body. Your dis-ease often leads to disease. 
it lends itself to mental and physical exhaustion. It has us withdrawing. And there's a host of other unhealthy situations that grow far into bigger problems than the original problem itself if we do not express what is happening within. Now, here's where I'm going to throw you for a little loop because step five and step one are actually the same in varying degrees. Here in step five, we have to accept again. Once we move through our experiences, we can accept what has changed. We can even look at how we have changed, how the experience has moved us into a new space and even new levels of our lives. Accepting where we are is always key to creating balance, to being healed, to living a life that understands misfortune will occur. But it does not have to be our definer, nor does it have to be our motivator. What we accept in stage one and what we accept in stage five will be different if we have properly moved through the steps. Those steps move us back to that mental picture we created with the ankle, don't they? Trauma occurs. We honor our emotional pain in the way that we did with the broken ankle, with the broken bone. We ask for help. We take help from others when needed and if needed. We give ourselves a break, hold space for ourselves, and offer ourselves grace. We learn from our experiences. A mind that is open to everything and closed to nothing knows that growth happens in the doing, in the experiences of life. It understands that by simply being alive, we will always run headlong into things that force us to reflect, to ponder, to explore ourselves, to explore the world, and more so the legacy that we're choosing to leave behind every single day. That legacy is written by our reactions, by our actions, by our movement, by how we show up. You don't want to show up through an unhealed history. It's something that really can create havoc in your life without even realizing that you are creating your own suffering in everything that you do. When we realize that, we then create that patience. Remember, healing is a process, a moving step-by-step -step ordeal, really, with no real time frame or limit. Emotional healing takes effort. It takes baby steps. What we have to learn always takes time, but I promise you it's always worth it. While we are taking our time and going through these processes, we can practice self-care and compassion. Look, if we're on crutches, we allow ourselves more time to get from point A to point B. If we are restricted physically, we know what we're capable of doing and what we aren't. And because of that, we allow space and compassion. The same effort and ability has to be applied while we are emotionally healing. We have to give ourselves time, grace, compassion, space to get from where we are to get to where we're going. And in the end, we have to apply gratitude appreciation. We are thankful when physical healing is over. When that day arrives, we take a deep breath and say, great, now I can return to life without so much concerted effort. Emotional pain should be appreciated at the same level. It sounds like thank you for the lesson. Thank you for the deeper understanding of myself. Thank you for allowing me not only to witness this moment, but also to witness my strength. Can you imagine if you applied that kind of gratitude to your hardest stories? To say, thank you. That really was terrible. This was a hard experience. But man, I'm so much stronger. I'm so much better. I have gained so much from that moment that without it, I know that I wouldn't be where I am. So thank you for the hard lesson. It's life altering when you apply this kind of radical gratitude to your hardest stories. 
bad things are going to happen. But doing this kind of work shows us that there is so much more for us than suffering. It shows us that these experiences are our teachers, that they are there for us. So all of this sounds great, right? The why, the how, the understanding that life is not against us. But then we still ask, why should we do this work and be so damn uncomfortable? The answer is simple. Because healing means freedom. It means peace of mind. It means giving yourself space. It means gaining control over that inner turmoil that keeps you up at night. It means letting go. It means thriving instead of surviving. It means putting a stop to being a victim in your life. You are not a victim of your circumstances. But there's even more. When you do this work, you prevent your emotions from gaining strength and turning your pain into physical illness. You gain confidence in the self-esteem that has been lost or perhaps you've never owned in the first place. It allows you to understand forgiveness and show up as a self-actualized person, a person who understands who they are, a person who understands that life has something more for them, a person who understands they are flawed and yet they are still going to show up and do their best regardless of what steps on their path. It allows you to stop reacting and start responding to your life in a manner that actually works for you, in a way that creates movement that impacts you and those around you. You begin to make better decisions, and it helps you live a life that no longer needs to be in constant control. (laughs) Is it easy? No, of course not. Is it necessary? Absolutely. You are the driver of your life. Only you can decide when you are tired of the baggage. Only you can decide when the work must be done. Perhaps you need to ask yourself these other simple questions. They sound like, what do I want? How will I get there? How will these steps change my life? Healing is not an option. It simply comes down to when. When will you stop? When will you take a deep breath? When will you realize you are ready to reconnect with yourself and your life? And when will you surrender to the steps, to the process? You always have a choice. Can't you own that? That you always have a choice, a choice as to how you're going to show up, to how you're going to take control, to how you are going to move through every experience. Isn't it time to do the work, my friend? It really is. You deserve to. You deserve to live a life that is healed, a life that is in balance, and a life that feels really great no matter what has occurred. Healing, this process, is an essential step into getting your life together. Thank you so much for listening to the Get Your Life Together Girl podcast. If you've enjoyed these tips to bettering your life, please subscribe and turn on the notifications to be alerted each week when a new episode is released. If you've loved this, we'd love for you to leave a five-star review on any platform of your choice as it really helps us grow and spread this message to others who need it too. You can also follow me on social media at Get Your Life Together Girl on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. You can also visit our show notes and our website at GetYourLifeTogetherGirl.com. Until next time, be kind to yourself and others.